Good afternoon and welcome back to NASDAQ Trade Talks. I'm your host, Jill Malandrino, global markets reporter at NASDAQ. Joining me at MarketSite, we have Tom Kotler. He's the CEO of HealthPrize, and we're here to discuss the ongoing prescription drug pricing debate. I'm sure there is no shortage of topics there for you, but let's. the obvious question is, public and political pressure, is it only going to continue to intensify? It's only going to get worse. There's no reason for it not to. Mm -hmm. Pharmaceutical industry is the only industry in the world that continues to charge more and not give you more for it. Right. Imagine paying more for an iPhone and getting no more features. And so it, it, it's going to be a problem as we start to really get into uh, outcomes-based contracting in all of healthcare. Uh, this is certainly going to be a place where there will be continuing political pressure on pharma to figure out ways to continue to succeed, but succeed without price increases. Well, solving the non-adherence crisis seems to be the elephant in the room, if you will. What is that? So patients don't take their medication as prescribed. They are not adherent to their prescription. This is a $637 billion global problem for the pharmaceutical industry, $250 billion in the U.S. alone each and every year. There is no other industry that wouldn't go after that money. It's a, the world's biggest last mile business problem um, with everything they had, but pharma's got an old business model, bring something to market, work on your, you know, extend your patent as long as you can and keep increasing prices, mm -hmm. they've really got to start changing and focusing on this problem, which could really solve their financial challenges going forward. How do you resolve that? You can't babysit people and, and make them stick to their medical regimen, um, which I don't understand, but it is what it is. So would you say farmers going in the wrong direction in terms of solving this? I think they are. They, they tend to take a very tactical brand-by-brand -brand approach rather than looking at it as, as an enterprise-wide challenge to be uh, really solved by the C-suite. For example, there is no chief adherence officer at any pharmaceutical company. Um, they really tend to look at these things as a tactical challenge as opposed to a portfolio or enterprise-wide challenge that comes down from the C-suite. At the enterprise level, uh, you can really make a very big difference. We worked with uh, Credit Suisse first boss, Credit Suisse uh, analysts, who uh, actually came out with a report in 2017 that said that 100% of EPS growth in pharma in 2016 100% was from price increases. That is not a sustainable business model. At the same time, there is no corporate effort, no enterprise level effort to go after that $637 billion. So we got them to look at that challenge at seven of the top 20 global pharma. And we, with, a, with Seek Enterprise as a consult, pharma consulting firm, looked at the other top 20 pharma. And every single company could materially raise their earnings per share and their revenue between 2020 and 2026 with an enterprise-wide focus on adherence. That can make a huge financial difference for these businesses. And that's part of the industry's triple aim. It is. Increasing revenue, improving outcomes, and reducing the overall cost of health care. My question comes back to that, though. Is it education? What, what does it take to make people follow their regimen? So people don't stay on their therapy for so many right. different reasons, price, price, side effects. But we believe mostly it's the psychological challenge mm -hmm. of the negativity of taking medication. So there's a lot of things you can do. Everything you do to nudge a person, motivate, engage, educate a person works. The real challenge is it's all done tactically at a brand by brand basis. And if they take a larger approach to it and really attack the problem with serious dollars, there'll be a big return for them. And to your point of the triple aim, it's the only thing pharma can do to get more higher margin revenues, improve outcomes, and reduce costs. So when you see commercials on TV and it's specific to one medication, rather than having it look at the entire umbrella and how you can help alleviate these more acute symptoms, if you have a broader education program. Is that is that what the aim is? Well, that's certainly part of it. Right. Pharma tends to be very brand focused mm -hmm. as a very patient focused. We talk about patient centricity in the pharmaceutical industry all the time, but we're really not. And taking a view of the patient as such would definitely be a step in the right direction. All right, thank you so much as always for joining us. At Thanks, Jill, site. appreciate it. And thank you for joining me. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ.